But you can see in the female, things like triclosan. Anybody know what triclosan is? Who's washed their hands today? Antibacterial soaps are going to kill us. They're ridiculous. They're stupid. They don't do any better than regular soap, but they're putting this chemical in everything. And now triclosan and triclocarban are found in every sample of water where... Is that also in hand sanitizer? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's exactly what that stuff is. It is horrible. We didn't need it for the last 10,000, 100,000, I guess we're in a synagogue, so only 6,000 years, whatever, <laughs> whatever you want to, right, we're next, I'm not trying to, I always try to keep it, some people believe it's only 6,000, and some people believe we've been here a million years, what's that, well, we're, oh, okay, all right, that's right, it was the Pope that came up with that idea, no, no, the Pope back in the 13th century is the one that calculated back and counted everybody up. Gee, am I off topic? Um, okay, here's the thing I'm going to get back around to cave hoods. By the way, I was, I was asked to speak not just on any of these topics, but kind of generally go around some of these things. Atrazine. Atrazine is a chemical that is used on corn. It's an herbicide. They spray it twice. They spray it once when everything, before anything grows, and they spray it again when it's 12 inches high. Kills off everything pretty much but the corn. And they spray it, guess when? In the springtime. When do we have the most precipitation? When do we have the most runoff? So this stuff runs down um, and spikes directly prior to spawning. Um, also, the personal care products are in the wastewater and the sludge. There's your BPA at the bottom. Uh, bisphenol A, wonderful chemical, discovered in the late 1800s, and in 1937, I believe, they discovered it was synthetic estrogen. Mm. They didn't need synthetic estrogen then, and a guy 10 years later said, wow, look how those carbon chains hook together. It makes a great plastic. So now every time you open a can, you're getting estrogen. The thing that looks like a glass lining in your can, it's bisphenol A, it's plastic, it's estrogen. You're getting dosed with synthetic estrogen. Uh, not to mention in baby bottles and in baby pacifiers, which now there is a movement to take it out of that stuff. Um, by the way, another chemical that's been outlawed in other countries, but we still love it. Um, so we're getting this intersex in the Susquehanna. These fish are mutating, but it's not really happening in the Delaware or the Allegheny. So you can look to BPA and to other, other estrogens, female hormones, could all have these effects on the fish, but if that's the case, why aren't higher population areas worse than lower population areas? It is my theory that agriculture being the main land use um, and the main difference in the Susquehanna and the Potomac and the Shenandoah and the James, all rivers that are showing intersects, um, that this is probably the problem. Okay, Michael? Oh no. Uh, every spring, atrazine, metallochlor, alachlor, nicosulfurin, keep going. We're washing that stuff in all the time. Here is uh, atrazine and how it's used. And if you see, we're just the, the only other red spot there on the East Coast is right here in the Susquehanna and on the Delmarva Peninsula. Is that mean No, that's just the corn. Those are the corn belts. Yeah. yeah. Um, and this is some science from a guy named Tyrone Hayes. He was actually hired by the company that makes atrazine, a company called Syngenta. They're out of Switzerland. By the way, uh, the, chem the chemical that they make is illegal in Switzerland, but we're happy to take it over here. Um, so he did some experiments. He was hired by the company and then later fired because he did find mutations. He found everything that they hired him not to find. Um, he found that the frogs coming out when, they, when they're exposed to atrazine are mutated and smaller and that they're getting eggs forming in their testes just like we're finding in the fish. And they're finding high levels of corticoids which are the stress hormone which are accelerated by the pesticides and create immunosuppression, decreased growth, retarded development, inhibited metamorphosis. And they are bioaccumulators as well, so they're building up. Um, 
There you can see the levels of this stress hormone in a regular frog that he was testing on, and then uh, on ones exposed to atrazine. This is beautiful. Here we've got oh testes, ovaries, testes, ovaries, and that's not normal. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. So she's got a picture with you and not normal. Not normal. <laughs> Hello, yeah. Very good. Um, just to show you what we are doing, uh, I left this in there. Just you can barely make it out on here, but when we get runoff up here in the Susquehanna River and we get a good slug of it, it goes the whole way down and affects the entire Chesapeake Bay. All right, now, um, there are some rules now recently put in place um, that I think all facilities are supposed to be following, including plans of how to deal with their waste products. Um, now, the DEP will tell you that that's regulation. I've never, I've never understood how a plan could be regulation. Uh, I don't but they call it regulation because they have to have a plan. Don't expect protection. Don't expect protection. Oh, um, <laughs> I didn't say that. Uh, so the total nit nitrogen going into the bay, coming from Lancaster County and a good bit from York. Lancaster and Franklin are our big problem areas in Pennsylvania. Um, but what the EPA did was they went in and they found a little sub-watershed in, in southern Lancaster County where it was small enough to be manageable. And uh, they did um, investigate, um, although they did not regulate, they did investigate uh, 24, or I should say they did not enforce, they um, uh, investigated 24 facilities, most of them Amish. Um, just to let you know, Lancaster has the um, highest nitrate levels in all of Region 3 of the Mid-Atlantic states. Um, they try, farmers over there sometimes try to tell us that that's the way it's always been. Mm. But no, that's the way it's always been because we've been slugging nitrogen down into the groundwater over there since about 1720. Um, so you have to understand how much is sustainable and how much is not sustainable, and then you got to make some tough choices. Um, let's see here. Yeah. So Lancaster is pretty much our worst area. Uh, what I wanted to get to was here, the drinking water samples were also tested in these facilities. So this isn't just about what it's doing to the river or to the bay, but what's it doing to the people around you? Um, they tested 19 out of the 24 farm wells, and uh, the bottom one is one that I'm concerned about. 16 out of 19 exceeded the maximum concentration levels for nitrate, and I think it was mentioned earlier, nitrate causes the blue baby syndrome, um, and also suppresses growth in fetuses and causes other problems. Um, I know for a fact that in some of our communities, people have come up to me with high numbers of stillborn babies and stuff like that. I, I, mean, I tell them to stop drinking their water. It's, it's crazy, and especially down in your community. Um, and those are, and also, this is the other thing, that these levels of pollution are also harming the actual animals that they're trying to raise. Uh, so this is, it was called Watson's Run. Um, and it has impaired 85% of the farms visited had not developed the plan required by law. Now, I talked to a guy the other day, he said, well, we should put in place some kind of system where they would have to get their plans by 2025. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> because that's the end of the Chesapeake Bay plan or whatever. And I'm like, sweet. You know, I'm going to remember that deal if I ever get a DUI. Yeah. You know? <laughs> All right, give me 15 years and I'll try and get into compliance. <laughs> uh, All right, nutrient trading. This is something you are going to hear about. It's got some potential benefits, but it is fraught with complications. And the first complication 
is the bottom one, continued lack of sufficient budgeting for enforcement by state agencies. How many people in this room have had a slight problem getting a state agency to actually enforce the law? Anyone? Anyone? So now they want to take on a complicated interstate trading system where if I want to put in, say I want to put in a new development uh, in Peach Bottom, and I'm going to put in 200 houses, and it's on Muddy Run, which isn't impaired. I can pay for a farmer in southern Virginia to fix up his farm so we can add the pollution of 200 new houses to Peach Bottom. Now, not only is that complicated, but who's verifying it? The DEP's already told me they've got desktop reviews. <laughs> like one arm. Like... <laughs> but there, they get the documents and they check out whatever the farmer said. Yes, I deserve credit for this. I deserve credit for this. And then it comes to the DEP. And then they also have been me, telling me that the brokers, and I'm, I'm jumping ahead in here because this is all laid out in there, but you need some kind of verification that these folks are doing what they say they're doing, right? Well, they're suggesting that the brokers are going to be the ones to verify that the credit is available. Now, let's see. Brokers verifying credit. Brokers making money whether the credit is there or not. Didn't we just go through this? Aren't we still going through this with four million people who can't afford their houses? That they were given credit? Because the broker could make money whether or not the credit was really there? 